This next one I'm very pleased to have. I've never done this before. No SQL injection. I've had students ask this question. There's MySQL and there's Microsoft SQL and such and there's Oracle and then there are the NoSQL databases like Mongo and I've, I've said you know for a matter of principle it is possible to inject into them but I don't really know how it works and now I know a little bit more. So same old thing log into Crappy and uh, view the shop and go to the add coupon. So let's just carry on here. So here I am. I go to the shop and there's some kind of coupon thing. So I add a coupon and here I just type anything. I don't know what the right coupon code is and I click validate and it determines that that was invalid. So I need to look at the request that was done to do that and that's this one here. Validate coupon. Okay. So this contains a parameter down here which is the coupon code I typed in. Just a few random letters. All right. So now we are going to try injecting into that field and see if we can find an injection that will um, will break it. And I see a question. What do we do when we find Adam's ID? How do you your post to add an item? Um, those were for two parts of the earlier one. When you find Adam's ID, you can go back and you can locate his vehicles, latitude and longitude. B, and that is because the object there is not protected by access control. If you know the ID of a car, you can find the car. And to post to add an item, you take the get request that revealed the item and you turn it into a post request. And in the same spirit, that's broken object level function, broken function access. The function of adding an item does not check to see if you're logged in as administrator. So you just construct a post request and uh, send up the atom and it adds it as if you were the administrator. That's all. So here I got a coupon code and I'm trying to put in some kind of special characters that will act like a wild card and let me get in even though I don't know a valid coupon. So we're going to send this to the intruder and in the intruder I want to uh, manipulate the coupon code field at the bottom and nothing else. It's highlighted the cookie also. So I clear all these things and I highlight my coupon code. So now it will change that to various values and I have some payloads which came from that textbook hacking APIs. Just a variety of um, SQL and NoSQL injections. So I start the attack. Oops, not yet. I got to set my payloads. Payloads I paste them in. There they are. So you have apostrophes, an apostrophe with a null byte. Those are the standard SQL ones. And here's the no SQL ones. Dollars GT, dollar for greater than something. These are sort of uh, algebraic expressions. This not equal to minus one, not a number, I think, and things like that. These are the no SQL injections. So now I run this one. And uh, OK. And here is a page. OK, so there it goes. And you see I'm getting all status 500s, which is probably not good. Let's see what the details are of 500. A 500 is, um, I would move this up. There we go. Uh, no response here, just 500 internal server error. So it doesn't seem to be accepting any of these. You know, I would expect if I succeed to get maybe a 200, OK. And all these are just 500s, so none of them worked. But if you look at the request, go down here and look at it um, and try some of these up here, uh, like one with an apostrophe in it. You can see it's URL encoded the spaces. And these ones down here, it's um, put it inside quotes. Anyway, I think the issue is we don't want those quotes. The quotes may be breaking it. And if we go to the curly braces, which are the most likely ones to work, these curly braces are the special characters that are most helpful in NoSQL injection. Those curly braces are being URL encoded as percent %7b and percent %7d. And that might be breaking it at the other end. I might want them to get through without being encoded. So there is a way to turn that off. And that's here. If you go into your intruder window, down at the bottom, 
URL encode these characters, including the curly braces. You can turn it off so it stops doing that. So let's turn that off and try again. All right, we're still getting a lot of 500s, but these are the SQL injections. Oh, there's a 422. That's something. Here's some more 422s. Okay, so let's see what those 422s look like. 422 is, first let's see what it sent. Okay, it sent this stuff, and the response is invalid character. Okay, um, and these are all invalid character. So it still didn't work. Let's look at one with a curly brace, like here's one with a curly brace. And it just got invalid character, and the request did send the curly braces without encoding it, but it still didn't work. However, everything is still surrounded by quotes, so maybe we need to get rid of the quotes. So that'd be the next thing to try. So we go to the positions, and let's get rid of the quotes around that injection. There, and see if it works without the quotes. Now, still, 422 is bad character. 500 is server error. 200. There we go. 200 is what we want. 200 means whatever I sent was considered valid. So let's just roll this up and see what it looks like. That was this one in curly braces, and the response was... Coupon code, 75, I got a $75 discount or 75% discount or something. So it accepted my coupon code as valid. So this NoSQL injection, curly brace, quote, dollars GT, end quote, colon, greater than null, was interpreted as a condition that's true, the equivalent of the SQL injection, or one equals one. So this mounted to a wild card. So that's the cool thing. That's NoSQL injection. And... Uh, Kind of a fun thing to try. All right. So that's it for that one.